guys. Um, well, welcome everyone to uh, my presentation. It's uh, all about promoting student agency in schools. Uh, my name's Ivo Hanan. I've been in education for 20 years, as, as Ali mentioned. Um, predominantly work as a design teacher, an NYP design teacher at Dwight School, Dubai. I also lead um, innovation at the school and I'm a really big advocate for students being more future ready, being innovative, learning 21st century skills. And, and this topic that we're currently going to be uh, talking about, student agency, is, is one of my main passions as well. So now we're a little bit behind the time, so I'm going to try and uh, speed my way through this. Um, a quick question for you all. Uh, what is the most important aspect of a school? Just have a quick think about that and, and, and maybe think about the first thing that, that comes to mind because I think a lot of the time when, I, when I'm in meetings, generally, not always, but generally and with people in various discussions, some of these things come up, these aspects, curriculum or grades, resources, or even the reputation of the school. But the main reason why we have the school is to serve our students. So we need to really be a lot more student-centric if we're not already with how we go about our day-to-day uh, -day business. And what we've got to bear in mind is that education now is so different uh, to what it was like you know, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, even 20 years ago when I was, when I was in school. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what student agency first is. This is a statement from the Achievement Gap Initiative at the Harvard University. Uh, agency is the capacity and propensity to take full purpose to take full purpose initiative, the opposite of helplessness. Young people with high levels of agency do not respond passively to their circumstances. They tend to seek meaning and act with purpose to achieve the conditions they desire in their own and others' lives, essentially being independent with their own learning. Now, when we think about that, that, that seems to just be commonplace. But if we go back to you know, this photograph, for example, is taken in 1923 from the Franklin School. It's in, uh, it's in America. And we consider how independence wasn't promoted here. Everyone sat forward in rows, taking instruction. When we fast forward almost 100 years to 2020, and whenever we step into classrooms, a lot of classrooms are still, you know, instruction-based, Teacher leads the way, teacher leads how the students are going to go about their task. Um, the teacher's generally driving the student's uh, outcome forward. Um, but in this day and age, students have become so much more independent with the type of content that they digest and their ability to create content. If you have a look at these social media sites, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, probably not necessarily for students, Snapchat, Facebook. Students are constantly creating their own content now in their own time. Um, this enables them to create connections, connections with each other, connections to their passions. So can we bring those connections to their passions into our classroom and enable them to feel empowered with their own learning? Because... When we create connections with people, we create relationships, positive relationships. And we all know now, particularly with Generation Z students, relationships are extremely important. They're a great, great way of getting involved with students and helping to promote their learning and helping them feel like they're succeeding in their own life. Just quickly considering this slide, a lot of these channels here, funnily enough, including Instagram and YouTube, I started because students actually spoke to me initially about how, how I need to engage in them. You know, as someone who promotes innovation, 
I need to engage in, in, in social media a bit more. So I started a, an Instagram channel and then I started a YouTube channel because I wanted to learn about these channels that students are involved in so I can connect with them more. And funnily enough, it has actually led to uh, richer connections and relationships as I obviously engage with the media that they are involved in. So we take a look at some of the, the research from this report, the Achievement Gap Initiative from Harvard University. There is this diagram that just quickly illustrates um, student agency. Okay, Students that have agency, uh, pr it promotes punctuality, good conduct, effort, high levels of effort. Um, they understand how to seek help and they're confident about that. And this level of consciousness of, of their own learning. Uh, students that lack agency, faking effort, generally not trying, giving up if the work's too hard, and they help avoidance. And they're, they're, the whole idea that the, the, the students that we're trying to promote in our, the behaviours that we're trying to promote in our schools tend to lend themselves towards higher levels of student agency. So in order for us to do that, I believe that we need to become, teachers need to become agents for agency. They need to be a lot more independent in the way that they approach their own practice. So in turn, that can be passed on to our students. So how do we do that? Okay, so in November, I was like beginning of November, I created this idea called the agency and um, with a team of, of, of teachers from different parts of the world, we promoted this idea of teachers becoming agents. So here are the characteristics of becoming an agent. The A stands for being active. You know, having that independence as a teacher, being active to, to seek out your own PD. I know Niall was talking just before about uh, Twitter, helping him out and developing networks. Go out there and, and, and try and seek your own PD, your own interests. You can get involved in these free courses now that enable you to be able to train online for free in, in, in most parts. But staying active in your own development and, and, and staying up to date with things. An agent would also put the center of what a Generation Z student needs. Gener every generation has different needs. And, and Generation Z students and, and people, young people, have particular needs. They feel things in a particular way. They have particular priorities in life. They're a lot more conscious towards the environment, for example. They're a lot more conscious towards being sustainable, a lot more than we ever were because of the, the environment that we live in now, right? So, so in heightening your ability to understand that generation, understanding the needs of every child, although this is something that a lot of educators speak about, it's brought into this framework because, again, every child's needs, not just the children that are in our classrooms, but also the ones who have additional learning needs and, and, and serving them best so we can help every child succeed. Bringing in new and innovative ideas into the classroom, the world is moving so fast now. Um, we need to try and keep up as educators to make sure that not only are we engaging with ideas that are, that are coming out and trends, but we're bringing them into the classroom and trying to engage with our students to keep them going and to keep them inspired with new ideas as well. And probably the cornerstone, something that I touched upon before, is this idea of trust. Developing trusting, meaningful relationships enables the student and teacher connection to be stronger and thus enabling students to, to develop their own agency and feel more secure with the path that they're traveling and knowing the teacher is guiding them. So can we all become more agents for agency? Can we help our students become more independent by practicing that level of independence ourselves? I'm hoping so. Uh, this is something that's becoming more widely spoken about. A year ago, there weren't a lot of teachers who even really knew about it uh, in my local network, but now it especially with the, the IB taking student agency on board in the PYP and it's slowly climbing into the MYP now as well. It is something that we're going to hear more about if you do not do not already uh, have it into, in your school framework at the moment. Maybe something for you to consider. So let's consider these students and put them into the centre of our journey, our, our academic journey in schools. And let's not block them by 
serving them tasks that they can only achieve in one way. There are multiple ways that people can achieve things now. If you consider a written paper as one, podcasting as another, creating some kind of a, a, a video or a YouTube stream as another, creating some kind of graphic or infographic as another. These are all different ways, and there's so many other ways that students may apply their own passions and interests to a task and an outcome. So not just one way, but making sure we support students and allow them to speak and have their own voice so, so they can do things in their own way. Because at the end of the day, we're all different. We all have our own way of doing things. I mean, as teachers, we're particularly passionate about making sure that when we do things in our classroom, we do them in our own way. So let's enable our students to do that as well. Try and bring possibly some of this into your framework if you can. I'm fortunate because I teach in an IB World School and the IB framework allows uh, and encourages agency, particularly with the, the 10 IB learner profile characteristics. Hopefully developing students that are independent, confident, and understand how to take those steps forward in a very much a, an ever-changing world. Um, as we look forward in education, I think this is the way that we need to move forward. We need to make sure students are, are ready for, for the future, and we need to consider changing the game a little bit. You know, we are still in a very similar format than we, that, that we've been in in the last 100 years, um, but the world around us isn't. I mean, it's completely unrecognizable compared to what it was like 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. So uh, I'm hoping that has inspired some new ideas for you. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, my name's Evo Hanan. You can reach uh, me on evohanan.com or if you search me on YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram, you can find various channels. Um, this information about agency you can find here on evohanan.com slash the agency. Um, I've also created some classroom posters to promote it and so on and so forth. And then there's a small network of teachers who are going to be happy to support you as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's me done.